Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. This is the final video in the tutorial series on the Flame 2024 batch paint improvements. In this video, we'll be exploring what it looks like to use the new tracking features inside of batch paint. If you've been following along in this series, you might have seen the tracker while we were going over other areas of the batch paint improvements. But now it's time to jump in. You can find the tracker in the Axis tab on the right-hand side of the screen. The familiar Enter Tracker button that you might recognize from other tracker modules throughout Flame is right here on the bottom, and it behaves exactly as you would expect. Jumping in sends us to the Flame Point Tracking environment for a one-point track with all of the familiar tools at our disposal. Next to the Enter Tracker button is a drop-down indicating which layer you'd like to use as the source of the tracking data, which is akin to the Use Media field in Action. Next to that is a relative and absolute toggle switch, which allows you to choose how your strokes are tracked. Relative keeps each stroke where it's positioned before going into the tracker, and absolute moves the stroke or strokes to wherever you set the tracker. I think it's a little easier to visualize when you see what's happening, so here I have a paint node with three separate strokes that I'm going to be tracking. Before we get started, I'll duplicate the paint node just so we can do this test twice. For this one, I'm going to set the tracking data to absolute, Ensure I have my three strokes selected, and then enter the tracker. I'll use the control click to move both the reference and tracker boxes to a good spot, and analyze forward. When we back out of the tracker, you'll see that all three of the strokes are placed on top of each other, and they've all moved to exactly where I had placed the tracker. Let's back out and see what happens when I perform the same track set to relative. I'll click enter tracker, move the tracker to roughly the same spot, Analyze forward, back out, and take a look. The strokes have all remained where they were originally painted, but now they have some tracking data applied in a relative manner. Since I have some tracking data now, I can show you a few other features that are absolutely worth mentioning. As you can probably tell, the tracking data is stored here in the X and Y position fields, but there's also this offset field. This is another key frameable field that would allow you to not only offset your strokes in space without affecting the tracking data, but it would also allow you to nudge the track and keyframe it if you couldn't get it to be perfect in the tracker. It's good to have that kind of flexibility because we all know that you can't get a perfect track all the time. Now let's jump into a real world scenario because it's one thing to track in some simple obscure paint strokes, but I think it's a little more useful to show you how you can use this on your next shot. I have a shot here where our goal is to remove this little triangular shape inside of the camera lens. It's a relatively simple shot. Nothing passes over the area in question, so I don't need to do any roto, but it isn't locked off, so we'll definitely need to do some tracking. First, I'm going to paint out the triangular shape using the reveal paint mode. I'll pull up the Reveal Overlay using Tab, and I'll use the Control-Alt shortcut to rotate the reveal around so the triangular object is not anywhere near where I'd like to paint. Then I'll use the Control-Shift shortcut to translate the Reveal Overlay right into position so it lines up perfectly with the edge of the lens. I'll turn off the overlay with Tab, and I'll paint the triangular object out. Now I'll take a look at the front view with F1 and the result view with F4 and switch between them a few times to make sure it's looking good and I think it's looking good. I've intentionally failed to notice that I was painting on a single frame, so I'll just pop over to the Edit tab, select both of my strokes, and switch them over to Sequence. Now if we take a step back and scrub the shot to see what I've done so far, you'll notice of course that nothing is tracked because I haven't started tracking, but more importantly, even if I did track these paint strokes in, the reveal is live footage, so it's moving. If you've done a shot like this before, you'll know that one workflow is to use a freeze frame, so that's what we'll do next. We have a few pathways available to us. We could use the Add Still feature to freeze what we've done, but I think it might be a little better to use the Lock feature, so I'll navigate back to my painted frame, luckily it's the first frame, and I'll switch over to the Paint tab and check the Lock checkbox on the frame I painted on. This essentially freezes my frame, and when I scrub now, it's a little hard to tell, but we're using just the one frame I painted as the reveal instead of the whole sequence. I'll head back to the first frame, the frame I painted on, switch over to the Edit tab, select my strokes, head over to the Axis tab, and enter the tracker. I will Control-click to move the reference and tracker boxes over to the triangle in question, 
and analyze forward. And that's it. When I click return and scrub the footage, I met with an excellent track and a potentially very nearly complete composite, all inside of a single paint node, now with the ability to track your paint strokes. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. And until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.